Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And welcome to another episode of Exalted Higher. I am excited again this week because my guest this week is Weez Stockton. She's a radio personality from WBGL, the radio family. Um, and she broadcasts in Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, and a lot of places across the Midwest. And of course, the internet. We all love the internet, right? Most important feature about Weez is that she is a prayer warrior. So today our discussion will focus a little bit on prayer. Weez and I have shared prayer on many occasions. And if you know her and you happen to mention an issue to her, she's gonna grab you by the hand, find a corner and say, let's go to God. And she's gonna take you right into the throne room of God. So Weez, welcome, welcome to our program this week. I'm so glad to be with you, Sybil. It's always a blessing. I look forward to spending time with you. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. So we let's just dig right in prayer. What's the mm. importance of prayer in our life? Prayer is so important. And, and here's what I always tell people. I love praying with people. I love prayer because I'm someone who's desperate to hear from God and prayer is our way to communicate with him. I need prayer. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I need to connect with my God. And that's why I love Praying. The Bible talks about praying for one another and going to him with every prayer request that you have. And so I love to see what is God going to do in this moment? What are we going to ask him in prayer? Where do we get to see him move? So prayer has been such an important part of my life for so long. You um, on your radio show um, and the time is in the evenings. Um, give, me, give me the time again. Seven to midnight seven to midnight. And you do pray a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I do. Pray. I pray as the Lord leads me. I think it's so important. I want to encourage somebody that's listening. Yeah. yeah. That may be like me, that's desperate to hear from God and needing that prayer. Maybe they're listening and they don't have a friend that they can just call. I want to be that friend and pray for them. Have you heard any testimonies of, of how prayer has changed things in some people's lives? Well, I've heard a lot of testimonies um, in my own life, how prayers changed my life. I mean, I went from being, as you know, Sybil, I was really sick for years and I had so many friends that came around me, prayed for me. I went from a walker and a cane to healing, to surprising the doctors. And I know prayer was such an integral part of that. I, I know that God did it. Thank you, Jesus. But it was all the prayer. It was anybody willing to stop and pray for me. And I'm like, Lord, I really want to return that favor. I really want to pray. And yeah, there's been the testimonies um, that have come in. In fact, last week I got an email and it just moved me to tears because it wasn't anything we used to, right? It was all God. And he said, you know, I was really struggling with having a panic attack in this moment and having all this anxiety. And you prayed on the year. You shared a prayer from an artist. And it was exactly what I needed to hear. It was like God knew exactly what I needed to hear. And I'm like, funny how God does that. He knows exactly what we need to hear and when. And you know what I love, Sybil, is that when I have artists on the show, I always ask them, will you pray? Will you pray however God leads you or whoever's listening? And they love coming in and being able to do ministry like that.
I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident in this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you <laughs> will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know, when, before I met you, I, um, someone had told the story about your illness. And I, you know, I've heard you before, I've heard you on the radio, I've heard about you, but you and I had never connected. And I remember being at one of the concerts and, and you were there and you, you were walking with a cane after people were saying that no one knows if she's gonna walk again, no one knows. And I can remember just how my heart just leaped for joy. I wanted to just go up to you and hug you and you had no idea who I was. <laughs> But I can remember praying for you. I can remember calling your name out to the Lord for healing in that circumstance. Tell us a little bit about that struggle and what, what happened. Did they ever figure out what the problem was? Yeah, first of all, I knew who you were. <laughs> You're dearly loved around this household. And, um, and I was so excited to be able to connect with you. The short end of that um, story is I got really sick about eight, nine years ago. I had pneumonia, it was very severe, and I just wasn't getting better. I couldn't get out of bed, and it got to the point where I, I, I couldn't do anything. I was bedridden where I could get up, but I would faint, and I didn't know what was going on. There was a lot of prayer in that doctor's office, and because they would say, we don't know what's wrong with you. We, we got to send you to the hospital. I'm like, I can't breathe. I can't, I can't really talk, and then I lost my voice. I had vocal cord dysfunction. Within this first year, nobody knew what was going on. They're like, why does she keep getting pneumonia? But in that time, that's when my prayer life was really grown because I was up all night. I had to do breathing treatments. I was scared. And I had a friend that would challenge me. What is your kingdom assignment for today? What is God asking you to do today? And I'd laugh like, I can't even get out of bed. Are you kidding me? She's like, in prayer. And then I would pray, okay, the Lord told me to pray for this nurse. So I'm going to pray for this nurse, uh, pray for this doctor, and, or pray for whoever got them in my heart. And it gave me a focus, like a kingdom-minded focus to get off of how sick I was and how scared I was about how sick I was and how no doctor knew what was going on. So about a you know, year and a half into it, I prayed with my doctor and said, I, I really am going to ask the Lord to give you the answer to what's going on. And my doctor loved Jesus. And she said, yeah, I'm we've tried everything. She called me two hours later and said, I don't know what's going on with you. I feel like the Lord showed me you have this, you know, rare condition that probably was triggered by the pneumonia. So anyway, all this testing happened and then they found four different conditions. And I was told by a specialist in Chicago, you know, at least get used to the walker and get used to the cane because you may, you're probably going to end up in a wheelchair with some of the conditions you have. And I said, no. And he said, you have to quit your job. I said, I love what I do. I work in Christian radio. I want to spread the hope of Jesus through the music. And at this point, I'd been off the air because of the vocal cord dysfunction. And I did get my voice back, praise the Lord. Yeah. But it was a little bit um, hard to hear that. But then I thought, I serve a God that knows what to do with broken things. And no matter what, he's going to use this. And we pressed in. I had a team of seven different doctors seven different one for this, you know, condition, one for this condition. And I said, all right, Lord, what do you want to do? And I would go anywhere and everywhere for prayer, Sybil, because I had love prayer and I was desperate to hear from him. And I was healed. I remember I had no pain in my joints and I didn't have to use my cane one day. And I went to my doctor and she said, what is going on? I'm going to take notes. I'm going to take notes about what's happening here. I'm like, okay, one word prayer. I don't know. I don't, my husband, John was like, where's your cane? I said, I have no pain. <laughs> and from there on out, I was able to get off heart meds and the doctors were scratching their heads, but I knew what happened. It was no secret. Jesus did it. And it, it's just been amazing. I'm so thankful for what God did all through prayer, you know? 
Wow. In your, yeah, and it's, it's just fascinating. It really is. I love, and we should, I had a coworker who said, why should we be amazed when mm -hmm. God does a miracle or when God answers our prayers? And there's one of the things that I really like too about you is that you have this uncanny ability to know when an artist is struggling and needs prayer. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that happen from anybody else. You, I remember once being at a concert and, and you were saying, I need to, I need to get back there. I need to, I need to pray. I need to pray for this person. I need to pray for this person. And, and it's amazing that someone told me once that if the Lord tells you to do something, he's going to provide the mm -hmm. avenue for you to do it and how everybody just moved out the way and let you walk right on in. <laughs> And I'm like, that's, that's because God needs to do his work. And if you're the instrument that he wants to use to do it, he's going to make a path available for you. And I just love that about you. I love the idea that I remember being at a concert with you once and I shared something, you know, about my family, my son or something like that. And you said, well, let's pray. And that's you. Let's pray. So right now, for anybody that might be watching this program and they're struggling with an illness and the doctors, like in your situation, don't know why this is happening. Would you say a word of prayer for them right now so that God would open up whatever door that's necessary and close the doors that are not the right doors for them to walk through? Would you do that for us? I sure will. I first want to say my heart goes out to you. Um, I'm so sorry for what you're going through. Let's, let's ask God. Lord, we thank you that we can come before your throne anytime and ask you anything. And Lord, I pray right now for the person that's listening, that's watching, that's saying, oh, that's me. The doctors don't know what to do. Lord, would you come? Would you move in that situation? Would you bring your encouragement, Lord? You're after our hearts. God, would you come to that person and say, I have plans for you? Because that's what your word says. Lord, would you bring healing? Would you bring wisdom to medical teams that have been searching for so long? What is happening with this person that's watching right now? Lord, thank you that you are the revealer. You're the great physician. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Thank you that you are moving even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it. So thank you, God, for what you're going to do. You're so good. And your love is so deep. And Lord, in fact, right now as I'm praying, I feel like my friend who's watching right now, it's just crying mm. and they need to hear how much you love them you love them and you care even at a moment when they're so sick thank you lord that your hand is on them and thank you for what you're gonna do in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen 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 thank you thank you so much and if you are watching you know, you can, you can connect with, with WBGL's prayer team if you'd like to. You can also connect with a team at Total Living Network, uh, our Care Force Division, and they will be happy to pray with you. You might be able to leave a message, might have to leave a message, but someone will call you back and pray with you, and we'll have that number on the screen for you. Thank you so much, Weez. <music>
we love Jesus. Mm-hmm. Our mission statement is we want to share the hope of Jesus, mm-hmm. one heart, one conversation, one song at a time. Because we know that God uses music to change lives. I'm sitting here with a microphone going on there every night because I heard a song on the radio in 1986 that God spoke to me, changed my life. I knew he was real. So I'm so excited to be part of a ministry that's about music because that's how God reached me. So I know, I know that there's hope going out over the airwaves and we do whatever we can to share that hope in Jesus. We do um, an event I love every year called Single Mom Saturday, where we just say, okay, how can we be the hands and feet? How can we be Jesus and serve these moms? And we'll do free oil changes. We try to get out to the community when we can and just say, who can we see? And I love going to events. Who can I pray for? Who is needing encouragement? And we just, we just get to do something that we know. Every morning we pray together as a team. We say, wow, we get to share the hope of Jesus through music. What an honor. What an honor. What a privilege. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. So tell us some things about Wees that uh, <laughs> most people don't know about you. Well, I, I shouldn't say most people don't know this because if you get to know me, you know, I love one. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is, I love to paint. I was an art major years ago. People don't know that. And I don't have as much time, but I love to do oil paintings. Really? Yes. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a worship leader. I love playing guitar on my worship team when I can, when I have the time. And um, I haven't sang to lead worship in a while, but I love singing and I love playing guitar. So those are some things that people sometimes are shocked. Like, wow, you paint? You play guitar? Yes, I do. So music is really close to my heart. Always has been. And it's important. Music and worship is important in our walk with the Lord, because I like to say it this way. It sets the atmosphere for what God is going to do in our lives on a day-to-day basis. And you are in a musical family. I know your husband. I've been knowing your husband (laughs) before I knew you. Yes. Your son plays guitar too. I mean, I I just, it's such, it's such a, it's such an awesome, an awesome thing. You have an amazing nickname. Everyone knows you as. Wonder Woman. Wonder Weezy. Wonder Weezy. <laughs> Wonder Weezy. So, I mean, I, I, how did that all come about? Well, uh, because I, I love Wonder Woman. And I think, you know, there's a certain age that we grew up watching Linda Carter on TV. We loved Wonder Woman. And I have to tell you, it's really interesting. My love for Wonder Woman actually ties into when I was really sick. And here's the beautiful thing. When I was sick on that bed and I couldn't get out of bed and I'm like, Lord, what can I do? You know what I felt like he showed me? I see you like Wonder Woman. In the in the kingdom realm, you have the strength of Wonder Woman when you pray. And so I love Wonder Woman. And I just became like, okay, okay, God. I love that. And I love that she's wearing the armor of the Ephesians 6. And my friends always jokingly say, hey, Wonder Wheezy. (laughs) So what's next for Wonder Wheezy? What's next? Well, I think what God has me doing right now is just, it's, it's almost like a, a dream come true. I love being able to get behind that microphone every night and say, okay, Lord, what are you going to do? What do you want me to say tonight? Mm-hmm. And what's next is always planning on the, the creative ideas that God has. I always joke that he's the best program director I've ever had <laughs> because he's the most creative. And some people come to me, where'd you get that idea to do that on the air? That thing? It's all come from God. So I never know what he's going to do next. And I hope that sometimes, I, I, sometime in the future, I can move into a, on my Facebook page for the station, do a live prayer night, you know, a live prayer time. Where I'm just, we're praying for people. We have a team around. Sybil, you're going to come. You're going to do that with me. We can pray for people live and just see those requests coming in. So what's next? I'm like more, more of the Lord, more ministry more impact, more Jesus, more hope. I love it. I love it. We thank you so much. We Stockton WBGL radio, my best friend, prayer partner in all of the above. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. God bless you. Well, thank you, Sybil, for having me.